This is a question which is a bit conceptual and I am sure, I believe that you will answer this correctly. Let's see this question. So where did Whitaker place all the eukaryotes? Well, pay attention to this. We are talking about all the eukaryotes in his five kingdom system of classification. What would be the answer? Let's see the options first. Three kingdom, two kingdoms, three kingdoms, two kingdoms, four kingdoms or all the five kingdoms. Fine. The eukaryotes we are talking about. Just recall about the five kingdom system of classification proposed by R.H. Whittaker. Based on that, five kingdoms, what were they? Kingdom, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. Now, if I talk about the evolution, right? This is the direction in which the evolution happened, right? The prokaryotes, that is Monera, Protista, then, then what? The Fungi, Plantae, Animalia, right? Okay, great. Now, now, talking about the cellular structure, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, Monera, they are the prokaryotes. They are unicellular. After that, protista, they are also unicellular, but they are eukaryotes, not the prokaryotes. They have a well-defined membrane-bound nucleus, whereas the prokaryotes, they do not have a well-defined nuclear membrane-bound nucleus. Okay, membrane-bound nucleus. They don't have that, prokaryotes. Well, so the answer would be from the protista, all other four kingdoms have what? They are eukaryotes. So the answer should be ideally the third option, which is four kingdoms. Yes. So these are the kingdoms, right? Now see, these are the prokaryotes, eukaryotes, fungi, eukaryotes, plantae, animalia are of course eukaryotes. So what would be the answer? It's the four kingdoms. I'm sure you have answered this question correctly. So the answer would be four kingdoms. Let us see if we can solve this particular question. And it's a very important question because here we are going to talk about some important terms and concepts. Let's see. The process by which a virus brings about genetic variation in bacteria. Well, a virus brings about genetic variation in bacteria. Let's see the options. The options are A, binary fission, transformation, transduction, conjugation. Well, some new terms. Well, let us take this opportunity while we are solving this question. Then we are going to take this opportunity to learn some new concepts. I'm sure you know about the first option, binary fission, right? What's that? It's a simple technique in which, or rather through which, one bacterial cell, right? It divides into two daughter cells. What happens here? The contents of the cell, it is equally divided into to the two daughter cells. So the contents of the parent cell I'm talking about. So the contents of the parent cell is divided. It's replicated first. It's duplicated. So copy is being made and then it is divided equally into two daughter cells. So identical daughter cells are formed, right? Identical cells. So this is a form in which you generally see in case of unicellular organisms, for example, bacteria, right? Simply two daughter cells are formed. Now what is transformation? Well, transformation try to concentrate on the word transformation something gets transformed what so at times what happens the bacterial cells they are capable of taking in the bacterial cells are capable of taking in foreign genetic material from the environment yes foreign genetic material from the environment and they get transformed right genetically so that's known as transformation. Now, what is transduction? I'll tell you, transduction is a very important process. You know what happens here? A genetic material is inserted into a bacterial cell. Bacterial cell through what? Through a virus, a bacteriophage. So through the bacteriophage, the genetic material is injected into the bacterial cell, right? Now, what is conjugation? It's a simple process which is similar to that of the sexual reproduction, but actually it is known as parasexuality, right? What happens here? The gene transfer happens. So some of the genes which are present in one cell is transferred to the other cell by simple cell to cell contact. And this happens through a tube, which is established between the two cells. And that tube is known as the conjugation tube. Fine. Well, let me show you the important answer to this question. And that's what? Have you guessed it out? So the process by which a virus brings about genetic variation in bacteria is, it's this. It's 
transduction. Take a close look what is happening over here. Pay attention to this thing. See, see what happens. This is the virus. It has inserted the genetic material. The genetic material, see what happens here. The genetic material is getting integrated. Yes, it has got integrated by replacing a part of the genome of the bacterial cells. Right? So, you understand this is known as transduction. That means now the bacterial cell will have the genes of the virus. It has trans. So, some sort of change in the genetic material has happened. Right? Let's see. So this is the question process by which virus brings about genetic variation in bacteria would be transduction. Yes, we are right. So transduction is the process where a foreign gene is inserted into the bacterial cell by a bacteriophage. That's a virus. Now, bacterial transformation as we discussed is a process of gene transfer by which some bacteria take up foreign gene, foreign genetic material because what? Why are we calling it as foreign genetic material? Because that genetic material is not a part of the genome, a part of the genetic material of that bacteria. Fine? So, again, once more I'll repeat. Why foreign genetic material? Why are we calling it as foreign genetic material? Because this genetic material is not actually a part of the genetic material which is there originally in the bacteria. So, it's foreign. So, this foreign genetic material is taken up by the bacterial cell from its environment and get altered because these are different genes. These are not genes of the bacterial genome, right? So those genes will be inserted into the bacteria and the characteristic features will be altered. And these will be the characters which is encoded in this foreign gene. Yes, so it's called transformation. Now conjugation is a transfer of genetic material between two bacterial cells due to cell to cell contact and this is through the conjugation tube. The genes are transferred, fine? Okay, and binary fission, that's easy, you know, is a process of asexual reproduction in which the bacterium divides into two daughter cells. Well, so this was a pretty important question. Here you learned some important terms. Transduction, transformation and conjugation. And the answer to this question is transduction. If you are following my sessions, then this question is really very, very easy for you. The capsid is made up of, capsid means I'm talking about, you know the topic we are discussing, right? So capsid means I'm talking about the viruses. It is made up of lipids, proteins, polysaccharides, fatty acids and the right answer would be what? Proteins. Yes? Well, I'm sure you can answer this correctly. Proteins is the right answer. So the capsid is the protein shell or the protein coat of the virus that encloses and protects the nucleic acid. And this nucleic acid can be either DNA or RNA and never both. The capsid is made up of small subunits called the capsomeres. And these capsomeres are generally arranged in a helical polyhedral geometric forms to form this capsid, which is the protein coat. Well, very easy. Proteins will be the right answer for this question. Let us try to solve this problem. Which among the following is a phosphate solubilizing symbiotic association? Well, see the options. Pseudomonas. It's incorrect. It did, it does not show it do not show any symbiotic relationship, but they are known to cause infection, so it is incorrect. Rhizobium. It's a nitrogen fixing bacteria. They do show symbiotic relationship with members of the leguminous plants. The legumes they convert atmospheric nitrogen. These are bacteria, you know. These convert atmospheric nitrogen into usable forms like the nitrates and the nitrites. These can be used by the plants. This is known as the Nitrogen fixation, it's incorrect. Mycorrhiza will be the correct answer. Well, it's a symbiotic association with the roots of certain plants. I'll tell you. Azola, this is again incorrect. It's a plant that forms symbiotic relationship with cyanobacterium. Now moving to this rhizobium. Take a look here. Okay. This is rhizobium. Mycorrhiza is the correct answer. Let's see. Mycorrhiza is a symbiotic association of the fungi with plants like the pinus of the gymnosperms. Okay, so here these fungi are capable of mobilizing inorganic phosphates present in the soil. They help in absorbing these phosphate. They have been mobilizing these inorganic phosphates in the soil and supply to the plants. This is a source of phosphorus for the plants. Fine. Pseudomonas do not have a symbiotic relationship, but they are known to cause infections. Rhizobium, I told you, nitrogen fixing bacteria. It's 
symbiotic association with the legumes. Azole is a plant that forms a symbiotic relationship with the cyanobacterium Anabina azole, which helps in nitrogen fixation. Okay, great. So, mycorrhiza is the correct answer for this question. Can you solve this question? Kruzfeld Jacob disease, CJD, is a disorder in humans caused by misfolded proteins, prions, prions, right? That affect what? The brain. The first option is the correct answer. Yes, they affect the brain. Let's see. Yes. So, CJD is a degenerative brain disorder caused by abnormal infectious proteins. Fine. So, it causes the brain cells to degenerate. So, you see, what I'm showing is the MRI of the normal brain and the infected brain. See, take a look here. See the structural difference. Yes, this is caused by the prions. The disease is called CJD. Fine. So, brain is the correct answer for this question.